Hey guys, it's Alfred Mudmos. Today, we're going to be getting these transmissions put together. Enjoy! So here's the Honda Bifo. I've got that transmission in it. And I showed you guys last episode the clutch I've been working on. I gotta get a, a bone, some bushings to make a, a pedal for the clutch and gas. And while these hubs are getting loaded up, I'm gonna try to get the transmissions put together so that when the hubs get here, I can put the transmissions that are all built in it and then be good pretty much on the, like, the actual like ground driver stuff to do the belt and stuff. Looks like I might have to track down the top case because this is the bottom case for the front. Um, yeah, I don't see that yellow top case, but it should be around here somewhere. So I've got all of the gears and stuff, and I got this box that has a couple more 930 gear sets and whatnot, at least two or Plus two more complete ones. So I should have at least four in there. So I'll dig that out, set it up here, find that other case. Got these parts up here. This was, I think I had this gear set put together where they'd be used, but I kind of let it fall apart. So that's going to be fun because it's, it's, you got to get like all these washers perfect and it takes like, it could take an hour to literally get that done. But I've got all of these, I got shift keys. The shift keys in the reverse chain, I'll show you guys. Oh, they're kind of tricky. But there's that stuff. I've even got, like, I think this is PLS 800 stuff. And then Chevy engine. There it is. That's it. That's what I was looking for. Nice thing is I've already got my my bearings, my brand new bearings up in there, so there's two of them in there if you can see that. I think I've mentioned this, but what I want to try to do is, if I don't forget, is where the space is down in there, that space, I want to put a grease fitting right there about so I can pump those needle bearings full of grease because the only way these get greased is from you putting the grease, packing them, and then putting the input shaft in. Because there's going to be a seal right there. So, the oil will stay down here, which these will grease filled. And then, there will be nothing up here except the grease that will dry out. I have to spin those one pretty fast. And I've also got a bunch of O-rings. I've actually just got two sizes. I think the two sizes go on this one here and on the input shaft. It's a little tricky to see, but no, that's not a, not a dime, no, nothing like that, but it's just a steel plug, plate, and it goes right on the side of the transmission, like that, and it plugs off any grease from exiting, and it keeps, if you have the auxiliary brake here, or the second brake, um, if you're using this one, this will be taken out and most likely be on this side. But don't lose this thing. If you do, a penny is, I think, the same size. If you do, I think a penny is like, very close. It might be a millimeter off, but it does fit in there just fine. Like that. And what you would do is just take some sealant and make sure you get this sealed up so the oil won't come out of that too. Got this printed out so I can assemble this correctly. Um, some of the main parts are like well special, like washers go and which way these washers go. These are a little bit hard to see, but they they got a groove on one side and a bump on the other side, and it's made for the shifter gears. So it shows you how to do that, like right there. But 
Um, this also just kind of shows me how the gear is supposed to go. You can go to authormonrose.com slash documents and you can print out whichever one you need from this. But now that I got this somewhat assembled, I'm going to try to get all the washer spacing all correct. So what I want to achieve is very little play in here, in here, making sure the gears are aligned, making sure the chains are aligned, and very crucially, if I can find it, making sure that this top gear meshes correctly, that it's as far down as it can go with changing the amount of spacing above it. That's pretty important getting the correct spacing on this. So I'll go ahead and get that stuff in there now. So I got these gears in here. Um, just threw them in there with a couple washers. I don't even have these little uh, tabs down yet. But what I'm checking is that there's very little looseness, which actually might be a little bit too much. This is a little bit too much over here. But all I need to do is probably just throw a washer maybe in there or change this washer out because it doesn't fit quickly in here. So I'll do something like that. Um, this I can add another washer right there like that. I'll fix that up. And then I also want to see I can see that this there's a big gap on here versus that. So I want to try to push these gears that way or push these gears that way which will just involve taking this off and putting the washer here instead of here. So, look at that, and then we can move on to the fun stuff like a uh, locker, that, and these axle bearings. Also, another easy way to say I want to change something on this uh, input part, I can just rotate them like this and then slide my gears off and whatnot. Set it back down instead of taking the whole thing out. Just a little tip. So I got these gears pretty well set. As you can see, there's it's just a tiny little play, which is what I'm looking for. I've also got these gears pretty well aligned, making sure that this gear can't accidentally, like, this gear can't jump into that gear on accident. I still got um, still got to get washers in these gears, but I did have to put two washers in there, which made me have to take out this washer, the first washer, which should go on here. So I don't really want. I don't really want this brass riding against the steel, so I'm going to try to find just a paper thin washer to put between that, which will hopefully take up most of this and give me the correct spacing, and then I can move on to this shaft. So after a little messing around, I got this input shaft. I had to take a broken, well not a broken key, but a stuck key, which I had to do the same to this one. And I've got the hole drilled for the grease fitting. This is just a test grease fitting so I can see what size I want. It won't be angled, it'll be straight. And this is actually a pretty thick thing to drill for. You guys probably can't really see it too much, but it's at least quarter of an inch actually. I wasn't expecting it to be that big, but I want to drill it right now because I'm going to put this together I don't want to be drilling and leaving the shavings in there because it made a lot of shavings but I'll go ahead and get this done that's the sound of success well for me at least so I've got all of that on make sure you put your little c-clip on make sure you inspect everything make sure all these how they should be nice and tight um, what I like to do is I like to put the back ones facing front and the front ones facing back. What I mean is those little tabs. And then this one here I need to flip like this. And I usually take something like a screwdriver and just... Uh, just kind of rotate it down like that. But in these cases actually, there's, there's usually more than just... One way you can do it, as you can see, this one you can do it both ways. I think on most of them you probably can, but like, that's just how I just like to do it in that pattern. So, now I'm going to put 
these gears like this. There's the locker. I'm going to put these gears over here because I'm going to put the shifter in, which I'll probably clean up a little bit. And when I do go something like that, um, I can put the, I can literally just drop the ball in and drop the spring, put it on, fill this up, and then put this on without, like, having to worry about, like, taking out the screw to put the ball and spring in from the outside or whatnot. But yeah, I've also got to clean up this axle because it's a little bit rusty. But I probably just steal the one from that because it's all cleaned up, I know. Eh, probably clean that one up. <laughs> but, get you guys an update here soon. Ball and spring are sitting in there. So I'm going to lift this up, set my shifter in. And, there we go. Right? I think that's it. Yeah, there we go. So, let me get you guys here. I put my transmission in reverse. And I put the selector in reverse. So now it's all good. And what's why it's not sitting there is because the spring's kind of tensioning it. So... Maybe I can put something on there to hold it down, but not big concern. Maybe when I'm actually sealing it up, that might be a concern, but now i got to get this penny put in there. Yeah. Shiny. Yeah, it looks nice. So we show you guys what's really going on here. So we got the bearings in. Look at how shiny that thing is. Wow, I just cleaned it up on the on the belt sand and I didn't expect it to actually come out like like polished. But anyways, I might actually I wanna kinda paint it, but it's only gonna really matter outside of it because the oil is gonna be up to these bearings. Um and yeah, look at this. See that thing it's rocking back and forth? I think I found out that these cases are actually bent, roped slightly. I've tested with a few of cases and they all just seem to be bent because I'm like, are these axles actually bent? But I'm pretty sure these cases are just a little bit bent, which is unfortunate, but it's just the way for all the weight of the transaxle sitting out, it just kind of pushes down on the bowl gear somehow. And it, bends them a little bit but it is what it is so I'm thinking I'm gonna just literally take these seals slide them in here because that's really all I can do because they're not very big slots but the problem is is I had to sand this down so it's not going to be perfect size as you can see I mean you can see a light through that thing, so that's not going to do nothing. So, I think if I, if I throw this in maybe as a, as a dope seal, you know, just to keep dope out of it. Like that. And then, just, like, silicone the heck out of, out of this, which there's a little bit of movement in there, which is, the bad thing is this might actually just want to spin the bearing, like, it's a little bit hard to see because it's all shiny, but the whole bearing is spinning. So hopefully with the pressure of the other case it will hold this and maybe my seal will work. But I don't know, this thing's actually pretty much ready to go now. Um, I also got to get just a little, just literally a, actually got to flip this thing around now that I see. Because this should be offset to this side, keyway. But it's literally a, the same um, keyway that's on the axles, I think it's, I, no, that's wrong, but I think it's, I think it's probably a quarter inch key, put it in there, there's two little, um, set screws, probably lock tight them, we'll be ready to rock, Dr. Lock 2. Anyways, I'm glad I got this transmission done, the front transmission should be, I think, a little bit easier, 
because I won't have to do this lock or the solid axle. But I probably will end up locking the front differential, so I'll figure something for that. But anyways, until next time, stay tuned for more.